And we're also learning a lot from how Ukrainians use our old weapons and how Ukrainians uh, adapt, uh, you know, make drones. And so we're actually benefiting in many ways. But before we continue, we invite you to follow our channel, the only American show reporting live from Ukraine every day. There's a report today about the number of dead Ukrainian troops since the war began, 80,000, number wounded, 400,000. And there are various estimates of Russian casualties, some putting the number of dead as high as nearly 200,000 and wounded at around 400,000. Whatever number you believe and whichever number is accurate, it's a staggering toll and these two countries struggling with shrinking pre-war populations will pay for it far into the future. Joseph Lindsley in Odessa today. Joseph, it's, uh, it's very sobering to read those numbers, isn't it? Indeed, and uh, good afternoon from Odessa. Bob, uh, you know, there's one reason why I very rarely do I ever quote numbers, because I know that, you know, in war, the information front is, is, is a part of working to win. And uh, we can't, you know, uh, we're not going to know the full scale, the actual numbers uh, from either Russia or Ukraine. Uh, you know, Ukrainians, uh, I mean, for example, you know, there have been moments when Russians have uh, hit something in Ukraine that was really bad. Uh, and but the Ukrainians, you know, they, you have to protect that information. And uh, and so we don't we're not going to know the full scale of of the loss. But you feel that when you're, for example, like in Lviv and you see the, the daily funerals. Uh, of the soldiers, and another way you see it is with the uh, all those who've lost uh, the soldiers who've lost legs and arms. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a common sight uh, around Ukraine, and that is at least a hundred thousand, a uh, hundred thousand uh, soldiers and civilians, including little children uh, who've lost limbs. And um, on uh, the score, I was uh, just reading uh, a, a haunting essay on a Substack newsletter from a Ukrainian writer, Zarina Zabrisky. And uh, she is in the uh, city of Kherson, and Kherson is right at the front line. It's on the Dnipro River. It was occupied by Russians in 2022, uh, but it was eventually liberated. But it comes under artillery fire uh, every day, and there's no notification because they're so close to, to the Russians. And still, there are people living there uh, and, uh, and a few brave uh, souls volunteering. And, uh, uh, but Serena points out that the the, the press, you know, kind of forgets about these places. And so she, uh, as a Ukrainian uh, journalist, is there to, to share stories. And she's describing what happens with the, the drones that are attacking civilians in the city. She says, that, you know, that's scarier than the artillery fire. She said, she writes, old-fashioned weapons are blind and impersonal. They kill all and everyone indiscriminate, indiscriminately. Kill, but killer drones see you. They chase you. They hunt you down. They want to kill you. On the other bank of the river, a Russian drone operator sees you in his goggles. You are a tiny figure on his screen. He sees you hide under that chestnut tree. He sees you squeeze into that half-ruined wall. He stares back at you. He pushes the button. When he kills, he, seems, he sees arms flailing in the middle of a light gray puff. I know this because many drone operators uh, share the videos of their kills on Russian social media. We are their trophies. Uh, that's a daily reality for everyone in that city for us all. Hmm. Uh, Joseph, you angered at least one listener yesterday, and I'm, I'm going to read a bit of this email to you. I was completely disgusted by Joseph's comments. I hope other listeners were as turned off as I was. He said, Washington does not want Ukraine to win. What? Wow. Bob, I can't believe you did not challenge him on this. Did he just crawl out from under a rock? I know he's trying to support Ukraine and the situation is sad, but it should not be at the expense of slamming the U.S. These are tough decisions the U.S. had to make as a leader. Care to respond to that, Joseph? Yeah, well, uh, and uh, always good to have give and take, and that's democracy and freedom and, uh, and holding reporters accountable. Uh, firstly, I, when I reported that yesterday, I was reporting the mood of many people here in Ukraine, and that's a fact. You know, what people think and feel is a fact, and it's, it's important to report that. And it is indeed becoming more and more clear to people that there is not the will in Washington for Ukraine to win. Uh, this is apparent not only in Ukraine, but also, I think, in the United Kingdom. Um, we saw the British prime minister went you know, uh, to Washington last week uh, to meet with President Biden. And, and it was all this hope that Washington would give permission uh, for these uh, for Ukraine to use British missiles to hit Russian military bases. And that support is not there. And so if you look at actually so that, that is a widespread 
uh, sad realization here throughout Ukraine that Washington does not want Ukraine to win. And that's a fact for me to report. That's what people feel and believe. Uh, whether or not it's true is up to everyone else to decide. Uh, but on this, you know, the key question, that first question from the listener, uh, you know, what if Russia, you know, uh, really, you know, sort of rained hell upon Ukraine and is as retaliation uh, for missiles launched inside Russia? But and this is where we've seen every time Putin, you know, Putin's laid out all these red lines and every time they've been crossed, uh, we don't see hellfire from Russia. We actually see a period of Russian weakness, uh, just as we've seen when Ukrainians hit the headquarters of Russia's they hit the headquarters building of Russia's Black Sea Navy, like the Pentagon or the Russian Black Sea Fleet. And and that was a big red line. And Russia did not have a major response. It's, Russia had to instead spend its resources to move the Navy uh, to uh, to uh, a port on the Russian mainland. And in fact, in the past week, when there, you know, it seemed that uh, everyone was saying that Ukraine was going to get permission to use the storm shadows to hit Russian targets. Uh, Russia seems now, we have satellite images to show this, used this time to hide their navy. They've moved the ships from that, the, the port uh, in Novorussik on the, on the Russian mainland uh, to other places. And, and so uh, this, when Washington said, we're going to help you, it gave Russia time to adapt. And, and then Washington says, oh, we're not going to help you. Uh, so they have really have put, uh, they've given Russia a, a sort of a, a benefit there. Uh, and this, I, but I think that that is really the fundamental question is, you know, how do you, if, if someone threatens you with nuclear threats, does that mean they automatically win or can you strategically work to make them weaker? And over these two and a half years, those who support Ukraine would say, well, we have lots of, hev- I mean, lots of evidence that uh, Ukrainians have weakened Russia. Uh, I mean, you know, Russia wanted to take Kiev and Odessa and these cities are free, uh, you know, b- because of the support from the, from the West. Uh, and because of uh, the courage of the Ukrainian people. Uh, and so I, I think that that, but that is that is the heart of the question. And then the, the listener also mentioned, you know, all the billions of support uh, from the U.S. And I think this is where it's important from an American standpoint to really analyze this, because, uh, the, you know, the, 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 the opposition to Ukraine and to the White House in, in the U.S. claim that there's all these billions of dollars flowing to Ukraine. And most of that is uh, valuation of old weapons. A lot of it is to buy new weapons for America, uh, which is another point the listener raised. Like we, we're, we're actually using Ukraine to improve our weapons, uh, to buy better weapons, which we were going to do anyway. But now we have a, a the Pentagon. It's easier for them to spend the money uh, to buy to make better weapons. And we're giving Ukraine our old weapons. And we're also learning a lot from how Ukrainians use our old weapons and how Ukrainians uh, adapt, uh, you know, make drones. And so we're actually benefiting in many ways. But uh, there's a lot more. Maybe we can address the rest of these points uh, uh, tomorrow. I'm happy to go through it all. But the first thing is uh, that certainly is the mood here. People feeling that Washington, despite its promises to Ukraine in 1994 and many times since, uh, you know, Washington took away Ukraine's best weapons, both Democrats and Republicans, uh, since the fall of the Soviet Union. And they promised to protect this country. And now it seems that they are, are actually enabling Russia uh, to to uh, to to attack Ukraine by not letting Ukrainians uh, hit uh, the missile and drone launch points that, that terrorize this country every day. Yeah, there there were uh, other points raised in that email. I just read a couple of them, and uh, your response is a good one to that uh, first question about uh, the feelings there. As the as the psychiatrists uh, say, uh, Joe, you, you don't challenge uh, somebody's feelings. And that's what you were talking about yesterday. More tomorrow. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you for introducing Ukraine on your social media pages. That's very important that much more people can get more information about the situation here and how everybody can help Ukraine to stay stronger and to save all the world.